Today's the day. Our mission critical ice harvesting drone is finished building. And our mission critical 13 catalysts have finished building. Time to find out uh, if Thomas is the ice harvesting machine that we've always dreamed he could be. This is Bill. Bill wants to build a Cinnaball and join the Angel Cartel cause in Zarzak, but he's not making it easy on himself. But first we're going to go check out the Ice Belt. We haven't laid eyes on it yet, and I have a feeling that probably NPCs spawn there, and it'll be easier to clear them out in our combat fit than in our ice harvesting fit. And yeah, there's one person in local. And a porpoise. Is he already at one of the ice belts? No, he can't be. They're too far away. I have a feeling that a porpoise at an ice belt would be pretty scared of a thorax. Well, we're not scared of a porpoise. Let's warp in and see what the deal is. Signature XP blue ice belt. Oh, the porpoise left system. Good news. We have Minara to ourselves, which is how we want it for this uh, <laughs> crazy experiment. Oh, it is bright in here. And there are no NPCs. Blue ice, glare crust. Pretty. Pretty. Okay, well, hopefully, hopefully, when in our ice harvesting fit, we'll have the fitting room for guns um, and tank. We won't be able to keep our drones, of course, because the single ice harvesting drone is going to take up our entire drone bay. Nobody seems to be spawning here. Let's head back to the station and refit. Okay, so this is Thomas's combat fit. We're going to have to remove our damage mods, our, magne our magnetic field stabilizers. We need the space for cargo hold expanders. We need to expand our cargo hold up to at least 1,000 cubic meters. We have four of these meta cargo expanders. I'm hoping that with all four of them fit, 1,047.1 cubic meters. That's delightful. That means we can still keep our combat power diagnostic system, which also then means that we can keep our micro-warp drive and our large shield extender and our guns. So we won't be defenseless. Uh, we will need to limit how much ammunition we're carrying. There we go. We have 3,750 spare ammunition in our hold, and we have 1,000.2 cubic meters of room. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to leave all of our combat drones behind and bring our ice harvesting drone out for its first adventure. It's creepy as all get out. Wagging his tail. What a good boy. Are you a good boy? Let's go find out. All right. He's out there. He's doing something. Oh yeah, his laser's going. We're going to align back to the station. There's one other person in local. They've got four scanner probes out, so they're clearly exploring, but nonetheless, we shouldn't just sit here. Okay, now I believe the ice harvesting drones cycle time is absurdly long. Activation time, five minutes and five seconds. So we are going to be sitting here for a little while. Okay, a quick recap on what we're doing and why, since the last time we talked about it was back in episode 11. We're going to need to mine ice in order to build our Cinnaball. Ice products are required to build the fuel blocks, which are necessary in multiple stages of Cinnaball construction. But... The game is pretty explicitly designed to limit ice mining to dedicated ice mining vessels. There are only three modules in the game that can mine ice at all. There's the ice mining laser, there's the ice harvesting strip miner, and there's the ice harvesting drone. The ice mining laser and the ice harvesting strip miner are among the few modules in the game that are hard limited in terms of what ships can fit them. 
the Ice Mining Laser can only go on Tech 2 Expedition Frigates, and the Ice Harvesting Strip Miner can only go on Mining Barges. The Ice Harvesting Drone, likewise, is made to be difficult to use. It's 50 cubic meters in size, which is larger even than the battleship-sized drones, and it also requires 50 megabits of bandwidth in order to field it. The drones are really designed to be used on the large industrial command ships and capital ships, which have drone bays to accommodate these oversized drones. Because the rules of our challenge require us to build all of our ships ourselves, we found ourselves in a bit of a bind. Building a Tech 2 Expedition Frigate or a Tech 2 Industrial Command Ship, or certainly a capital ship, would be such an involved process that it would overwhelm everything else we have to do on our way to building a Cinnabon. It would essentially become the Corvette to Expedition Frigate Bootstrap Challenge. Mining barges, at least, are Tech 1 vessels, but the blueprint originals for them cost over a billion esque each, which is an inconceivable grind. So we really had to focus in on this idea of using the ice harvesting drones. Because although they are huge, they aren't explicitly limited in terms of what ships can use them. Any ship with 50 megabits of drone capacity can theoretically field at least one ice harvesting drone. But there is another catch. Ice is mined in massive chunks, 1,000 cubic meters per. Now all of those dedicated mining vessels have dedicated mining holds. So they can fit a whole bunch of ice in their bellies even if their standard cargo holds are quite small. But if we were going to mine ice in a non-mining vessel, that standard cargo hold would need to be at least a thousand cubic meters, or we wouldn't be able to fit even a single chunk of mined ice in there. So we were on the hunt for a ship with at least 50 megabits of drone capacity, and a cargo hold that was expandable with Tech 1 and Meta cargo expanders up to at least a thousand cubic meters. There are a whole bunch of battleships and battlecruisers that fit this mold, but again, the blueprint originals for them cost over half a billion is. On the cruiser level, we discovered that there were exactly six ships that had the required drone capacity and a large enough hold. They are the Execorer, the Celestis, the Vexer, the Thorax, the Bellicose, and the Arbitrator. Mostly Galente ships, which makes sense because drones are mostly a Galente technology. Now, if we were building a cruiser, we wanted to make sure that it was also going to function as a combat ship for us, and because we were focused heavily on turret-based combat skills, the Thorax was the obvious choice. And so here we are, in Thomas the Thorax, with a full rack of cargo expanders in the low, and a single ice harvesting drone in the drone bay, and Thomas is ready to harvest some ice like a boss. Speaking of which, in the time that recap took, one drone cycle should be almost finished. And I've been feeling I've been feeling good about the choice we made to go with Thomas the Thorax, Thomas the Gank Engine. Um, though our belt riding excursion was not a complete success, uh, Thomas has proven himself more than capable in some of these low sec anomalies, which is a nice alternate income source for us. And if this works, if this proof of concept works, It'll be an absolute coup for us. It's a little bit annoying that with a drone, as far as I can tell, there's no way to see how far it is in its cycle time. How far along it is in its cycle time. I guess we'll see the laser. We'll see the laser stop going. While we're alone in the system, let's see if we can't get a nice screenshot. That's pretty nice, the way the drone's tracking along with us through space. I approve. Oh! Is he coming back? Is he flying back to us? He's slow. I'll meet you halfway, buddy. I'll meet you halfway. Huh. One unit of blue ice. Let's get this baby back to the station. It worked. It worked. Not any, no NPCs even showed up. We sent out our drone. He did his work. He brought us the ice. We can do this.
Now, what's this going to reprocess into? That's the question. How many times we're going to have to do this? How many five minute and five second cycles are we going to have to sit through? So reprocessing the one unit of blue ice that we've managed to haul back to the station is going to get us this. 207 units of oxygen isotopes, 17 units of liquid ozone, and 34 units of heavy water. So how does that help us? Well, you've seen this chart before, which is the task list we made of all the things we're going to need to do in order to eventually build the Cinnaball and complete our challenge. But I've realized that this task list is not super useful for measuring our ongoing progress, because most of these tasks, we aren't going to be able to tick off in a single go. We're going to be doing them piecemeal a bit here, a bit there. Like with ice mining, for example, we need these oxygen isotopes. But we also need the hydrogen isotopes, the nitrogen isotopes, the helium isotopes, which can only be got in Amar space, Kaldari space, Mimitar space. So we're going to have to ice mine in at least four different regions of space before we can tick this entire task off. Instead, what I think we should look at is this, which is, our, which is the shopping list of all of the raw materials that we need and all of the BPOs and reaction formulas we need before we can start building the Cinnaball. If we can get everything on this list, then all that we left to do is do the reactions, assemble the blueprints, and then put them all together, Voltron style, into the Cinnaball cruiser that we're going to fly to Zarzak. We can tick these things off one at a time. In fact, we've already got a few of them. And today, from this blue ice, if you see the 207 that we pulled in from one unit, we should be able to get all of the oxygen isotopes we need right now back to the belt just three more units of blue ice and we're there we don't want to be trying to get the liquid ozone or the uh, heavy water from the blue ice it's just it would take far far too long but there was some glare crust there too and i think maybe we'll want to try mining the glare crust and see how that works out for us because i'm pretty sure glare crust is where the heavy water liquid liquid ozone and strontium clathrates is at its densest so let's head back to the blue ice belt while we're still alone in system We didn't actually reprocess. <laughs> our hold is still full of ice. Yes, please. To our hangar. Our ISK balance is getting very low. We have half a million ISK left. At some point soon, we're going to need to take uh, Carmel out to the belts to earn us some bounties just so we can afford to keep reprocessing. All right, my friend. Back to work. way back we've moved over here so as to be further away from the warp in in case anyone tries to disturb us so we'll let our drone fly all the way over to our new spot in the belt we'll unlock this asteroid and we'll lock this one we'll mine it on the next cycle all right blue ice Jettison. Go back to work. Why are we jettisoning our, jettisoning our ice, you might ask? Are we crazy? Well, the truth is that a few episodes ago, we did a little, uh, a little low-sec mining outing here in Minar, using our catalyst to quite sensibly mine some feldspar in a Serpentis hideaway. And in the YouTube com comments, I got absolutely roasted for my mining strategy. So, I've learned my lesson, and we're going to mine this ice the way the professionals do. If you're still confused, maybe it will help if we take a little flashback to this afternoon. That's right, we're going non-linear this episode. We're going to go ice mining later tonight, but even though we're down to just 4 million isk, there is one blueprint I would like to buy before we hit the ice belts. So... We're back in Angela, 
and we're off to our dar. You might notice that Angela's looking particularly spiffy in her new paint job. We do indeed now have skins. Maybe it's time to actually take a quick jump back in time to this morning. Well, it's only been like 12 hours since I invited people to send Bill skins and people are really coming through. It's like Christmas morning. Look at my stuff. Isn't it neat? We now have 12 ship skins. I want to say a big thank you to everyone who contracted skins to Bill. I really do appreciate it. From here on out, our little rags to riches story is going to feature swank designer rags. Our ships are going to look so much prettier in the videos. Thank you again. Wreath Blueprint, 3.225 million -esk. Now, a wreath is a hauler. We could have bought a hauler blueprint in Minar for the Nereus, the Galente hauler, but the wreath, the Minmatar agile hauler, is the most agile of all the Tech 1 haulers, and for low sec operations, that agility, the time into warp, is it overwhelms all the other considerations. The main thing we're concerned about in a hauler is that we get off-grid into warp as quickly as possible, so it was worth the nine jumps out to Ardar to buy a wreath blueprint rather than settle for a Galente hauler. And we'll be thankful to have this wreath later tonight. Welcome back to the ice field. That's right, we have skins now. Let's uh, see if we can't get Thomas some new threads. We have quite a selection, and we'll use them all at some point, but I think Exoplanets Hunter might be the mood right now. This looks like a serious ice prospector to me. Hello, my drone companion. Get back to work. Drop this blue ice in there. Very good. One more and we'll, we'll be ready to go back. One more and that should be all of the auction isotopes that we need. That is our fourth and final chunk of blue ice. We're going to bookmark this cargo container. And we're going to dock up at Manar Station to get in our wreath and come back and pick up our mining like a professional miner. Building a Cinnables wreath. It looks like we're going to want to build some more shield extenders. For now, this will do. We haven't seen any NPCs there yet. Now we can't possibly undock until we give this beauty a name. She's going to carry our burdens. But what else but Lydia? Lydia to the blue ice belt. Now the wreath is, as I said, the most agile of the uh, Tech 1 haulers. But it's still uh, not exactly a gymnast. That's not bad. We go into warp about as fast as Thomas does. Okay, I'm impressed. And our cargo hold, 6,800 cubic meters. You know when that would have been useful? That would have been useful when we were hauling a million titanium back from Mormolot. But it's also useful right here and now. 2,000 blue ice into Lydia. Straight back to the station. Although it does occur to me that this whole maneuver only actually saved one trip back and forth to the station and Thomas at the cost of leaving our ice vulnerable to being stolen. Which does make me worry that I'm going to get roasted in the YouTube comments again. <laughs> Guys, I don't mind. This is all new to me. I'm figured out as I go. Go gentle. Alright. All the ice in the hangar. Reprocess. Three units of blue ice. 621 
Oxygen isotopes. Oh, and we got one, one strontium class rate this time of the 108 we need. This is not going to be the way we get our strontium. All right, let's reprocess it. Another 17,000 of our precious isk. And then 828 oxygen isotopes. That means we can put another check mark on the board. We are killing it. All right. It's time to start actually keeping track of this stuff. We built five station containers the other day. We've not yet assembled any of them. So now we're going to put one together. We're going to name it Cinnabal Materials. And into it, we're going to put everything that we have completed so we can look there and know what we don't need to collect. Here we are. We still need, we still don't have enough titanium or pyrite. We still don't have enough of any of the other ice products, but oxygen isotopes in the bag. Now the heavy water and liquid and the liquid ozone, we were collecting slowly, but we still have a very long way to go on both of them. We haven't collected even 10% of what we need. There was also some glare crust in that belt though. So let's go while the system's uh, clear. Let's go see what that gives us. Back in Thomas, go to the same belt that's been serving us well. Let's fly over to this glare crust that is 54 kilometers away, so it's going to be as far away from the warping as possible. There's a hecate on scan. We're lining back at the station now. We do not want to mine ice with the hecate system. We are too defenseless. Hey, pilot is left. All right, glare crust. What do you got for us? Another five minutes and five seconds. This is highly engaging content. I'm tempted just to include it all. I have a feeling that when it comes to editing, I'm going to feel differently. But right now, my temptation is just to include this entire however long of ice mining in a single go with me just staring dead eyed at camera. Ladies and gentlemen, we have glare crust. Back to the station to see what that gets us. Okay, so one unit of glare crust reprocesses into, there we go, 690 heavy water, 345 liquid ozone, 17 strontium clathrates. We need all of those things in more or less those proportions. If we can harvest seven more units of glare crust, will be at our goal for all three of these ice products, in addition to the oxygen isotopes. So as soon as this Vipple pilot clears out of the system, we're going to go right back and do just that. Oh, although local's spiking now. There's now three people in local. We'll give them a minute. We'll give them a minute. While we wait for Madar to quiet down a little bit, I feel like maybe we should take Armella over to Angatilli run a couple of belts and earn a little bit of isk since we're currently at 520,000. Maybe that will convince these people that sitting around here waiting for me to go back to the belt and the thorax is not worth their time. And, and we can take this opportunity to give Carmela a much deserved new paint job as well. So many options. That's not bad. Goes pretty hard. We'll try Spirit for now. I like the red. Suits Carmella. Oh good. Angatilli is empty. Ten belts to blitz through, and then we'll go back and see if Minar saved ice mine again. 
hopefully we can earn at least a couple of million esque here. Oh, clone soldier right off the bat. Couldn't have asked for better, especially now that we know that these guys are uh, not only giving us the bounty, but also the tag this guy has will be two and a half million esque to uh, NPC buy orders. Look, let's look at our wallet back in shape nice and fast. Simple pilots over here now. That's not great. Hopefully we can kill this clone soldier before he finds us at the belt. We are alone once again. Alone with the Serpentis clone soldier transporter who is not long for this world. Very good. Next belt. Oh! Oh! A hauler just spawned back at that belt. A hauler spawn. And we have a wreath. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Oh my goodness. Okay. Mission Ice is on hold. Mission Hauler Spawn's been activated. Is this it? Is this the next episode bounce back? From burning our million Tritanium accident on 13 Catalysts? Is the universe really throwing us that much of a bone straight away? And there's three haulers this time. Gone so long. I've gone so long in this game without ever seeing a, even a single hauler spawn. And now another two back to back. I need to get the cruisers first, though, actually. I can't go straight for the haulers. These guys are actually going to do a fair bit of damage to me. I don't you guys go anywhere. But once I take out the second chief patroller, I think I can actually go for the haulers before worrying about the chief guard. Just one cruiser shouldn't be able to do enough damage to uh, Red and Thomas's tank. I just didn't want to get popped by all three cruisers focusing on us while we were trying to kill the haulers. But we want to get these haulers blown up quick because they can't. They will warp off eventually, but their wrecks will not. Their wrecks will stay in place and wait for us. All right, trucker. Trying to be webbed and blasted. This is so unlike this game. To be so forgiving of mistakes. I mean, we don't know what these guys are going to have. It could be only Mexilon. It would be too much to ask that there be another million Tritanium. But we can hope. What do you have, Serpentis Loader? Two Serpentis Loaders, one Serpentis Trucker. I don't know if what minerals they spawn with is uh, dependent on their names. It was a... The Trucker last time had Mexilon. I forget the other one was called. Serpentis Transporter, maybe? Well, that's the last of them. We can check and see what check out the loot before we. Hundred thousand titanium, I'll take it. How about the trucker? Half a million! Holy shit! Holy shit! Redemption. And the loader. 600,000 Tritanium in those two wrecks. Almost goes a very long way. Goes a very long way towards undoing our 
unspeakable screw up in episode 13. 800,000 titanium. Holy crap, you guys. Second chances do exist. Kill this chief guard. And we're not even going to have to do 15 trips in Carmelo this time. We're going to do one trip, I think. One trip in Lydia. Oh, what a windfall. What a break. Nice trucker had 100,000. We'll grab as much of it as we can in, uh, in Carmela's non-cargo expanded hold. Just because why not? And then it's Lydia's time to truly shine. We built Lydia to haul ice so we could jet can mine in the ice belt, which it turns out was a really dumb plan. But... But we were geniuses without even knowing it. A wreath was exactly what we needed. If we didn't have Lydia sitting back in the station, this would be another ordeal like before. All right, Lydia, prepare to jump gates. Now, to be fair, that titanium is certainly not ours yet. Taking a wreath without uh, a cloak, without inertial stabilizers with basically no tank in between gates and losec is a pretty risky proposition <laughs> but we have a very small window of time five-ish seconds on the gate on the way there five-ish seconds on the gate on the way back we just gotta cross our fingers and hope we don't cross paths with anyone with a warp scrambler system is empty Take that. <laughs> we can only run our we can only run our micro workcraft for like two cycles before we, before we run out of uh, capacitor. This is not this is not our long term uh, wreath fit. Definitely needs a little bit of work. But we're not asking much of it right now. Just be a wreath. Look at that. Look at that. One left to go. But if my math is right, it looks like it should all fit in. But Mantooth is in system. Do not come to this belt, Mantooth. Look at that, 0.66 million titanium in a single car hold. One run, one and done. We're gonna warp to our safe spot near the Minar gate so we can descan it, because now we have Mantooth and Valuni, both here in Angatilly. I would really like to get Lydia, who we built with incredible foresight safely back through that gate. Lydia's align time is 8.3 seconds. So when we land on the gate, we'll be able to jump through then 8.3 seconds on the other side that we can be tackled for. If we could use the market that we're going, we would have bought a cloak an improved cloaking device too. And then with the cloak and the micro warp drive, Lydia would be able to burst the micro warp drive, cloak for one cycle, and then decloak and already be at warp. It's the micro, micro warp drive cloak trick trick. It means that you're only targetable for like that one brief blip at the start and the end of the cloaking cycle. 
All right, straight to station. Dock, 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 dock. They haven't followed me through. This is a new guy in local. Almost, almost. Establishing warp vector, and we're we're safe. Six hundred and sixty thousand titanium, just like that. These holler spawns defining the run. And this was supposed to be the ice episode. Holy crap, it's trit day every day. Trit week all week. What are the odds? What are the odds of those holler spawns? They must be more common than I think. But I certainly don't see them that often. Means we can update our Cinnabola materials container and our checklist. Checklist says we need 648,000 titanium. In the bank. And a 3 million S bounty tick just came in and resurrected our wallet. Still low. It's still low, but at least now we can afford to reprocess and manufacture. We can afford those SCC fees. A little like nickel and dime that, uh, that the man charges every time you want to use the station services. Okay. Back in Thomas and back to the belt. System's empty again and we have ice to mine. Rats have spawned. And there's people in local. This is getting a little spicy. Let's try and see how long it takes us to take out this uh, battleship with 127 DPS. I mean, we have nothing else to do while, uh, while our little drone buddy is uh, collecting the ice for us. I feel like our uh, ice harvesting drone needs a name. We keep referring to him. Not having a name is making it weird. Good ice mining name. Sven. You are Sven the Ice Harvesting Drone. <laughs> My wife is calling from upstairs that the Ice Harvesting drone Drone's name should actually be Olaf. So, so Sven, you're Olaf now. If anyone's guess whether Olaf's going to finish harvesting the Glare Crust before he managed to finally crack this Commodore. Neither of these are quick processes. Oh, here comes Olaf. We've burned through almost a full reload of antimatter. <laughs> this is, uh, we really miss those mag stabs. Come on, Olaf. Come on. There we go, one unit of glare crust added. And a dock up. We'll come back and finish this guy off in Carmella. More ice products in the bank. And Carmella's on uh, cleanup duty. Oh, does the skin actually permanently change the color of the headlight? I feel like this headlight was default blue, except when we were warping before. I like it. Let's see how much that guy's healed up while we were dropping off our ice. Yeah, Carmella is much better suited to this than uh, the ice harvesting version of Thomas is. No mag stabs, no combat drones. Honestly, Carmella is better suited to taking out these guys than Thomas would be anyways. Even if Thomas was in full combat getup. Especially now with us like Pretty sweet uh, red headlight bug eye look going on. I'm digging the skin. Olaf, to work. We have another glare crust.
We're on our last chunk of ice, and the Serpentis have come to cause problems again. Not very much problems, though, I don't think. Serpentis Chief Safeguard? What's your problem? You know that uh, this glare crust is required to uh, build Serpentis ships too, right? Why are you messing with the supply chain? Now, as I was saying, this will be our 13th chunk of ice that we've harvested. Uh, and after this is done, we're still going to need to harvest eight more. Four chunks of Minmatar ice, two chunks of Amar ice, and two chunks of Kaldari ice. For a grand total of 21 ice chunks, that is, given that Olaf takes five minutes and five seconds to cycle, that's almost two hours spent in ice belts waiting for ice harvesting drone to bring us back chunks once every five minutes. Uh, but let's imagine for a second that we had saved up the two billion isk that it would take to buy a Covenant, which is a Tech 1 mining barge that is bonused for harvesting ice. So the Covenant, if we train mining barge level 5, because in this hypothetical, let's say, let's say we did. Why not? We end up getting a total minus 45% reduction in ice harvester duration. Uh, because we wouldn't just be using the ice harvesting drone, um, although we could fit one, we'd be using an ice harvester, which brings back the same one chunk of ice, but instead of taking five minutes, it takes four. Uh, so with the full skill lo loadout on a coveter, that would actually be two minutes per cycle. And a coveter would be able to fit two of them. So every two minutes, we were bringing back two chunks of ice. Uh, and then every five minutes, we'd br be bringing back one more chunk of ice from the drone. So in 10 minutes, we would bring back 12 chunks of ice. The entirety of our ice mining would have been done in 12 minutes with a covenant. We would have saved ourselves in total 108-ish minutes, but it would take us substantially more than two hours <laughs> substantially more than two hours <laughs> to save up two billion esque for a covenant blueprint so i'm feeling pretty good especially now that our final chunk of glare, cr glare crust has just landed in the hold i'm feeling pretty good about our thorax and olaf plan i think this is the right way to go big moment Reprocessing, hopefully, our last ever chunk of glare crust. And we have 120 strontium clathrates, of which we need 108. We've got all the clathrates we need. We've got all the ozone we need. We've got all the heavy water we need. We have all the oxygen isotopes we need. It's the nitrogen isotopes, the helium isotopes, and the, what's the last one, hydrogen isotopes. That we still need to get, which is going to require us leaving Galente space. Fortunately, Minar is not that far from Amar and Mimitar space, and there is ice that we can mine over there, but it's in faction warfare space. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks again to everyone who sent in skins. I know we've had a steady twice a week update schedule, but over the holidays, there's only going to be one new episode a week. The next new episode will be December 24th, after that December 31st, and after that January 7th. Please, have a safe and happy holidays.